Hello, hello everyone. It's Amy Armstrong here. Today I'm sitting down with Julia Boza and Julia is going to share her story, uh, her own experience with the RCP and becoming a, an RCPC. So welcome, Julia. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. I feel really um, honoured to be here and help you to bring more people to the RCP community. Yeah, that's definitely our hope through sharing people's stories. So tell us your story, Julia. Tell us, take us back way before the um, you found the root cause protocol and minerals and, and what did life look for you look like for you then? What sort of um, health issues were you having uh, at the time? Uh, well, it was in my mid-30s that I started to feel like things were really just slowing down. I was everything was slow, my brain, my body. Um, I had the brain fog, poor energy, memory was starting to fail. Even my coordination I noticed was not very good. Um, and I had been quite athletic as uh, a young girl in high school and such. Um, so when I was about 35, or I distinctly remember this, going to see my doctor and saying, hey, you know, I'm just so tired. I don't feel good. Um, I need to know what's going on here. And uh, he looked at me and said, how old are you? And I said, well, I'm 35. And he says, well, actually, he started laughing at me. And um, I'm like, what? And he said, well, you're 35. It's just like, mm -hmm. that was his explanation. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that really made me mad. So um, I divorced him. <laughs> <laughs> let him go. And, yeah, I let him go. And I, I just started on my own journey. And so I was looking for all kinds of things, some kind of validation. My mom had hypothyroidism, and she had it since I was a young girl. So I thought, hmm, maybe this is me too. Um, I had all the classic symptoms, cold all the time, fatigue, chronic pain, brain fog, um, tendonitis, plantar fasciitis, heavy periods, hormonal, blah, blah, blah. Um, so by the time I reached age 42, I, I got the diagnosis and I thought, okay, well, now I have this and I wore it like a badge. Mm -hmm. And um, my doctor said I would never get better. It would, I would always have this um, but the thing was, is I started to just get worse and worse, um, after being put on medication for it and, um, started putting on more and more weight, uh, periods got heavier, uh, I became anemic. And, um, so I started the iron supplements, my iron levels never came up. So my doctor told me to take double that just made me bleed all the more with the heavy periods. Um, and I started looking into uh, things like vitamin D and I took super high doses of that. And I took high doses of vitamin A, synthetic vitamin A as well. And by the time I was 45, I was diagnosed with melanoma. Um, and then, so then I got really serious about, you know, okay, we got a lot going on here and this needs to stop because I'm only 45 years old. Yeah. And um, I was, I worked as a legal assistant back then. And um, <laughs> I was really actually the laughing stock of, of the, uh, the office, even though I was really well experienced and knew what I was doing, but you know, I couldn't remember what I did that day. I couldn't, and I was in a really high stress job and had to be like, you know, on the go really with it the whole time. But I couldn't remember where I put things. Um, I was having like millions of dollars worth of uh, real estate deals during the week. And um, it was very stressful not being able to remember what I had done or hadn't done. Yeah. And the fatigue was getting so bad that I was falling asleep driving to work and I'd fall asleep at my desk. I couldn't get up in the morning. I uh, even had to change my hours at my place of work 
because I just could not get up in the morning. And um, then around the same time, my husband had a near death experience. Um, he had some really bad digestive problems for a lot of his life. And then it just exploded with a bunch of stress that he had through his work. And uh, literally his colon um, ruptured and it was very, very scary. And so at that time we started to look into nutrition because it seemed like the medical system didn't really have anything to offer either of us. And we knew that these things just don't come from nowhere. So I got really serious about nutrition and started doing that um, self-directed. Um, and then I decided that I wanted a career change because I knew that it, my job was very stressful. And so I enrolled with the Canadian School of Natural Nutrition and I took their program. And then um, by that time, my husband decided he was gonna sell his business because that was a big reason for his health problems. And so in my, uh, in my new field of holistic nutrition, I started doing one-on-one uh, -on -one consults in the evenings after work. And we decided that there was a need for a health food store in our community. So he sold his business. We started up the health food store and went from there. And at the same time, um, that's where I landed upon Morley Robbins. <laughs> and um, <Good> timing. <laughs> pardon me? Good timing. Oh, I'll say, yeah. yeah. Um, I got to honestly say, though, uh, I wasn't really, yeah, I was more curious than anything, but I thought, you know how Morley, he just shoots straight from the hip that I, I was, it kind of turned me off a little bit. Um, but in a way, I appreciated it because I thought, okay, well, this man speaks with a lot of confidence. He must have something to offer. Um, but I kind of, you know, just pushed it aside for a little bit because I was busy building my business. And I came across a podcast of Wendy Myers, and uh, she was interviewing him about iron. So that really piqued my interest. Mm. And I thought, oh, he, he doesn't know me. I'm special. I've, I'm anemic. <laughs> Again, wearing it like badge. Yeah. And, um, uh, but I was, I was still interested and I, somehow I landed on May group. I don't know how, um, I'll say it was divine intervention really. Cause I needed that. And so then I, we started carrying, um, or I started the RCP first for myself and I, I noticed a lot of difference in my health. And so then we decided that we would start carrying those products in our store because it made such a huge difference for us. And then I started using it on some of my clients, but I honestly didn't have the confidence hmm. in, in guiding someone on the RCP without the knowledge so I was still in my little narrow niche, working with hypothyroid people, anemic people, and really not knowing what the heck I was doing. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so take us back um, into what you experienced once you started the RCP. Obviously, you've said that things started to, your health started to improve. What were you, what were you noticing uh, well, most of all, the energy and the brain function improved. My memory was so much better. And um, like our store has a cement floor. And as we were working here in here doing all our leasehold improvements, I noticed how I could stand on cement floors now for hours on end and it wouldn't really bother me. Whereas before one hour, and I would be like, I couldn't do it. I would have to sit down, be forced to. Um, I noticed that my foot pain went away. Like I used to have really bad um, plantar fasciitis and 
foot cramping that I couldn't, uh, I was on a soccer team for a little bit there and I, I had to quit playing because my feet would cramp after being on the field for about two minutes. And then I found that I was actually crippled up for about three days after that. Mm. And uh, so that pain went away. I almost went on disability through my work from the tendonitis that I had was so bad. And um, so that went away. I had uterine fibroids. Those went away. Um, I was on a lot of bioidentical hormones. I went off all of those. Um, it took me about six months to get off most of those. The last one to go was the thyroid medication. And within two and a half years, I was able to get off that. Wow. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so uh, this whole time, I guess there was a little, a bit of you just kind of trusting in that process. Um, you know, mm -hmm. you say you, you, you didn't probably have the time to invest in, um, in digging deeper into the protocol at that point, where you just kind of, um, you know, watch the, watch the podcast and, and made a start. Is that right? Yeah, I spent some time reading the iron toxicity posts, because uh, really back then, there, there wasn't a handbook. There weren't any RCPCs. I mean, you, people were doing consults with Morley back then. So yeah, I did it on my own. And I did fine. I mean, it was, it was kind of confusing because you really had to pay attention in the mag group and you had to know who, who it was that were admins and who wasn't because, mm -hmm. oh, there's, there's so many, so many well-meaning people there that are trying to help people, but they're really not. <laughs> so it was, um, yeah, I mean, I did okay. And I think that having a background in nutrition and be able to guide myself through a program that really, really helped me. But um, I just feel like the RCP community now is so much better than it used to be. And um, it's come leaps and bounds from where it was. Yeah. And there's so much, uh, there's so much support if you need it in the, in the community, you know, in the paid community, um, as, as a member there, you know, you have access to a lot of information and a lot of support, but even just in the free resources, like you started with the iron toxicity posts on the website, um, mm -hmm. you know, which is certainly how I got started, same sort of era, there wasn't, um, there was the mag group back then. Um, and Morley's original website, which I poured through <laughs> as well. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, there's, you know, now there's the, the handbook, which um, just on its own is, you know, I think it's probably nearly a 50 page document and it's, it's full of information to help you get started on your own. So it is entirely possible to, to, you know, go down this route without a really, deep knowledge um, that can come in time as the brain fog clears um, I found I'm not sure about you but you're able to take on board more information so we can make a start um, just just with the information that's out there in the free community so right. so how did you then transition into thinking that you might like to go to the institute and actually formalize that and become an RCPC um, I had thought about it but I, I didn't feel like I was in a place where I was ready to do it. But um, actually morally, uh, I had made a comment on the May group to uh, one of the members there. And he reached out to me afterwards and invited me to take the training. He was impressed with how I'd handled the situation. And, and I thought, wow, um, gosh, I'm, it's really not a good time. I mean, um, my brother had just died of cancer. I was his executor for his estate. He owned a farm. We had just moved from the city to the country. He, there was a, a farm sale that I had to get ready to sell all his property. And I thought, oh gosh, hmm. Well, uh, and I, I felt like, you know, if, if my husband could pick up the slack at the business then I could do it. And so we talked about it. And I decided to jump in. And also by that time, they were already in unit five. There were five units in by the time I started. So I was behind. <laughs> but 
But is it okay? I mean, uh, at that point, I would say that my health wasn't as good as I thought it was. I mean, I've, I've just improved more and more through the years. And having gone back and done the training two more times, um, just because I'm a I love, I love to educate myself and I love health and I'm just so fascinated by the human body. Um, or, uh, as Molly it, would call us, gearheads. <laughs> yeah, I guess a gearhead. <laughs> like to dig into the research. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just love it. Um, but at that time, you know, I think my stress was so high that there was a lot that I didn't absorb. Mm. And so... Uh, that was another reason for me to go back and take the training two more times um, besides the fact that I love learning. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of how I got into the training. I wasn't that ready, but I did it anyway. What, I, 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 there's, there's such a powerful message in that, isn't it? Um, you know, about uh, particularly if you, if you're doing it for your own, for your own health or somebody in your family, uh, it may not ever feel like it's a good time to do it because you are sick yourself or you're caring for somebody who who is unwell. But that's exactly the time that I think that, you know, I would encourage people to start. And it was certainly the same of my story at the time, caring for a child who was really chronically ill. Uh, it certainly doesn't mm -hmm. feel like the time to be delving into study, but I guess once you start and when you realize that that information is not going anywhere, it's, you know, it's in a portal for you to go back and revisit when you need and when you want and start to really um, take it all on board slowly, then you realize that maybe it's not such a bad time to, you know, to start learning more about how you can help yourself. Um, well, exactly. And yeah. the sooner you get started, the sooner you can help more people. Absolutely. So tell me what that looks like for you now. How are you, um, how are you helping people? What have you done with the, all the things that you've learned um, through being part of the community and becoming a root cause protocol consultant? How, how has that changed your practice? Well, it's made my practice um, a lot broader, I would say. Um, you know, with my previous training, through the Canadian School of Natural Nutrition, we were taught that, um, you know, you got to find your niche. And to a degree, I, I believe that from a business perspective, mm -hmm. but from a health perspective and an RCP's perspective, most of all, you know, understanding how the body really works and, and understanding that if we give the body what it needs, it can figure it out. We don't have to make things complicated. The body itself is complex enough that, um, you know, like I say, if we just give it what it needs and it can, it can do the rest. And so it has really opened up my doors. I'm working with um, a lot of different people, a lot of different ages, male, female, um, all kinds of um, health concerns from, uh, you know, neurological to hormonal to cardiological you name it it's mm -hmm. just really opened up the doors here for me and it's made me a lot more confident in working with these people whereas before I used to turn those clients and, and send them away to a naturopath and saying you know I don't think I can help you because this just isn't my area but now that you know I have the understanding that energy is everything then you can help anybody absolutely and it helps uh helps us to help clients to let go of the labels doesn't it you know once exactly you, once you have that understanding like you say that it's i mean it's very complex but it's also very simple in what the body actually needs to make that energy cleanly and efficiently um, if you can convey that to people and help them to understand that they can let go of their, their label um, and start mm -hmm. to heal. That's a really powerful thing. Mm. Yeah. For sure. And so uh, thank you for sharing your story because it, it's a really um, it's a really common one in, in the fact that you were very, very fatigued. You know, you started off with the, the thyroid symptoms uh, and, the, and the brain fog. That's just such a common story in our society now, particularly for women. 
Um, mm-hmm. So I hope that by sharing, you know, sharing your story and, and sharing how you use the RCP and how much better you're feeling now, it can really help people to understand that that, you know, that common bag of symptoms that a lot of us carry around that we don't necessarily have um, a diagnosis for until we do, <laughs> which for you came yes. years and years after, didn't it? Um, mm-hmm. that, you know, that we can that we can intervene there and start to give our bodies what they need to start coming back on board. We don't have to wait for that diagnosis to treat the symptom. That's right. Yeah. So tell us, I guess, just to, to, to wrap us up, um, how has the RCP changed your life? Oh my goodness. Wow. Um, I, I really feel like I'm a much better student. Um, you know, if I, you know, going back and taking the training again, I feel like I have um, better mental capacity that I can sit down and read some of these clinical studies and actually make sense of them. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not just a matter of reading the beginning and the end and getting the gist of it. I can actually um, get into it and, and read through it without falling asleep. <laughs> And, uh, and it's, it's actually so fascinating. So, um, yeah, and I feel, I feel more youthful. I often tell people that I have more energy in my mid fifties than I did in my mid thirties. Yeah. Like no comparison. So, yeah. And then as far as professionally, uh, like I say, it's made my, my practice more simplified it has um, opened up the doors to um, allow me to take on more complex cases and help more people. So I think that's beneficial in a lot of different ways. Yeah. And here's to more energy in your, your 50s than you had in your 30s. And certainly for me, more energy in my 40s than I had in my 30s, 20s and even teens. So um that will put us in good stead to power us along and help as many people as we can um, to experience the same results. Thank you so much, Julia, for taking the time to share your story and, and hopefully, um, you know, it resonates with, with some people in, in our community and, and helps people to see that there's another way. <laughs> yes, yes. And I just want to put a shout out to uh, Canadians out there that I am working on getting RCP blood tests available in Canada, um, more easily available. They are available. It's just, um, it's really, really difficult here. And um, so watch for updates. Um, That's something that I'm going to fight to the bitter end for, because it's um, something that we're all faced with here and um, watch out for that. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, and and how can people reach out to you um, if they would like to get in touch? Uh, probably the best way to reach out to me is through my website, which is intuithealth.ca or uh, by email at support at intuithealth.ca. Yeah, great. And, and we'll pop those details in the video notes as well. So people in Canada um, can can reach out to you and um, you can navigate them through this through this process. So thank you again. Thanks for sitting down with us. Thank you, Emmy. It's been a pleasure. Thanks.